So one of the first things you do when you get a new camera is you have to go through the menu system and set it all up to the way that you want it. And I was getting ready to do that with my R5 and then I got to thinking maybe somebody else might be interested to see how I set up the camera for landscape photography or, or landscape photography and nature photography. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. If you're not a Canon R5 or R6 user, this is probably going to be quite boring for you. So we'll just see you in the next video. Leave a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. For everybody else, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is jump into the menu. The very first thing that we're going to be confronted with is image quality. We're gonna be changing this to raw. And we're also, because I don't typically shoot raw plus JPEG, I'm just gonna turn JPEG off. I choose to shoot raw because I'm coming from a camera that shot much larger files than these. If you are wanting to save on space, you can shoot in C raw, but you're not quite getting the full, the full quality of the raw file. So I recommend just shooting in straight up raw. I leave dual pixel raw off and we can go to the next tab. Next tab, um, we have ISO speed settings. One of the things that I prefer to do is to go into the mi minimum ISO speed range and allow it to access L50. So th basically this is a, this is a interpo interpolated ISO range. It's sometimes useful when you're trying to lengthen your shutter speed, shooting moving water, things like that. And you can access that just by clicking down and turning that on. We'll hit OK. Now the HDR PQ settings, auto lighting optimizer, highlight, tone priority, all of that stuff, that is all only going to affect your JPEG or the picture preview on the back of your camera. So don't worry about any of this stuff. It doesn't really pertain to us because we're shooting in RAW. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go over to the third tab and we're gonna go down to color space and we're gonna make sure that we have Adobe RGB selected. By default, it's typically set to sRGB. That is a smaller color space. And even though I'm pretty sure this only affects JPEGs, I always go and I change it to Adobe RGB just to be safe. I'm pretty sure it only affects JPEGs, but you can never be too careful. So we'll do that. The other things on this page can either be changed in the quick menu or only affect our JPEG preview. So don't worry about that. Focus bracketing. Uh, for now, we're going to leave this alone, but we are going to come back to this when we set up our My Menu section. Interval Timer, again, that's going to go in our my, my Menu section. Shutter Mode, I prefer to put this on Electronic. I mean, sometimes I put it on Mechanical. It all kind of depends on what I'm shooting. Um, for most In most situations, unless I have some really fast moving something, I would prefer to leave it in electronic because it's not going to wear out the shutter in my camera. It's not going to introduce any kind of softness from the, the slamming of the shutter. Sometimes just the movement of that shutter can introduce just the tiniest bit of camera shake and especially in those longer, longer shutter speed situations. So for that reason, I'm going to switch this to electronic for now. Let's go over to the seventh tab. One of the things that I absolutely love about Canon is the touch shutter. So I'm going to enable that. That's going to allow us to just touch the rear LCD. It's going to move the focus point to where you touched. It's going to focus and it's going to trip the shutter. I absolutely love that. Image review, I typically disable. So we're going to turn that off. I only want to review images, you know, when I want to do it rather than ha constantly have them pop up after every single image. I'm also going to turn viewfinder review on. I really like that because in a really bright, bright environment, like, you know, you're outside shooting in broad daylight, it's really nice to look through your viewfinder and be able to review because first of all, it's really high resolution. You get a really nice preview of what your image looked like. Plus it's just easier to see. We're going to go into viewfinder display format, make sure that it's on display one simply because it fills the frame and I very much prefer having the having the image take up the entire viewfinder rather than have a little bit of added information which you would get on display two. So we're gonna make sure that display one is selected and we're gonna go to display performance. Now I personally like to change this to smooth and then I also hit the info button here and that's going to make sure that 
we're getting the the highest display display quality through our viewfinder i just like the look of it i don't care that it drains my battery a little bit faster but you know that's kind of up to you that's just how i set it up next we're going to go over to the autofocus section i'm going to switch the subject to detect over to animals simply because we're setting this up for nature photography so if we are doing any opportunistic wildlife photography we want to make sure that we have it set to look for animals rather than people going to make sure eye detection is turned on we're going to make sure that continuous autofocus is turned off i'm going to turn off my af assist beam firing that is that really annoying uh, orange light that shoots out when you're shooting at night or whatever and it makes everybody shooting around you really upset so turning that off is really nice so the next thing that we're going to jump into here is the case settings for our, our servo servo autofocus one of the things that i like to do when i'm doing wildlife photography is i try to make my autofocus a bit more sticky meaning it's not going to jump from subject to subject the reason I want it to be more sticky is because in wildlife photography, often it's going from subject to background, subject to background, if it jumps around. So we want it to be more sticky, meaning staying on the subject a little bit more. Also, I want to make it to where our autofocus is quick and snappy, and it's very responsive if a bird, for example, speeds up or slows down throughout the frame, which they, they're often coming at you or going away, and it's nice if your autofocus can keep up with that. So what I like to do is to go down to case two and you can see that you can go in here and you can change some of the settings by hitting the rate button. So I'm going to hit rate and I'm going to leave the tracking sensitivity where it's at, but I'm going to speed up our acceleration deacceleration tracking and then move it over just one. That way we have a very sticky autofocus that's not going to jump from subject to subject but it's also a very quick autofocus. And I find that that works pretty well for wildlife. Okay, so on our fifth page, one of the options that we have here is RF lens manual focus ring sensitivity. So one of the things that you'll find, especially when you're manually focusing on a, on a mirrorless camera is that because it's focused by wire, it can sometimes be a little bit touchy. So one of the things that I like to do is go in here and we can switch this from rotation speed to rotation degree and sometimes the, if you're used to used to manually focusing a EF lens for example the, the degree is going to make a little bit more sense so I like to switch that to degree that way the further you turn it the further you're moving your autofocus it's a little bit more like you turn it this much and that's how much you get I highly recommend trying different different methods, but that's what the way that I prefer to do it. So now in the fifth tab of the playback section, the, one of the things that I want to turn on is highlight alert, otherwise known as your blinkies. Super important, super useful. That way you know if you've blown highlights when you're playing something back. So we're going to enable our highlight alert. Another thing that you can do is turn on your AF point display. Sometimes it's annoying, sometimes it's nice to see exactly where you focused because then you can zoom in on where you know you focused and make sure that you got that critical sharpness there. For now, I'm going to leave it off, but it's something that I often turn on. Another thing that I like to do is over in the wrench section or the setup section in the first tab, we have auto rotate and sometimes it can be a little bit annoying if you've taken a vertical oriented frame or a portrait oriented frame and it's being displayed horizontally or like you know it's not filling up the whole frame as you took it so one of the things i like to do oftentimes is switch this to only auto rotating on a computer that way if you took a portrait oriented image and you go to play it back it's going to display in portrait orientation rather than in landscape orientation it's just a little bit it's one of those things that it's not a big deal but it's kind of nice for it to automatically you know go to the way that it was shot Another thing I like to do is to go down to the second tab to the beep function and I like to turn that off because nobody likes the beep, beep pop. I hate the, the beep, that's so annoying. The sounds that cameras make in the two second timer function are incredibly annoying. So I like to disable that. If you're doing night photography or like super early morning, low lit photography, 
you can it can lead to severely underexposing your image if you have your screen too bright because you're looking at this backlit screen and it looks really good on the uh, to your eye but it, you're actually severely underexposing it so in those situations you want to turn your screen brightness down in other situations though it's really hard to compose an image that you can't see so if it's really bright outside you're shooting in the snow during the daytime you need to crank your bright screen brightness up. So this is going to be something that you either add to your My Menu section or just remember that it's in the third tab of the wrench. Regardless, you probably need to be changing your screen brightness from time to time. Another one of my favorite features with Canon is the fact that the shutter will close when you turn the camera off. That way, when you change lenses, you don't get tons of sensor dust. That's going to be found in the fourth page of the wrench and by default it's turned on or actually it's set to closed rather than open. If you do need to clean your sensor, this would be how you would do it. You would do go down to the sensor cleaning and then clean manually if you're going to clean your sensor. But I find that I have very little sensor dust as long as this shutter at shutdown is set to closed. So now in the orange menu on the first tab, one of the things that I often change is down here with the number of bracketed shots. By default, Canons and a lot of most cameras are set up to take three images when you set up bracketing. It takes the first one, and then it takes one that is darker, one that is brighter. I prefer to set it up to only take two. That way I take one brighter image for shadow information and then another shot that is darker. Most of the time it's two stops darker, sometimes three stops darker. So I'll go down to this number of bracketed shots and I'll change this to two. That way I'm not taking more images than I actually need to get the dynamic range that I need. Having said that, there are some situations, very, very few, where let's say you're shooting like in a cave out to a light source. You know, that's a really high dynamic range scene where you have deep shadows, really bright light source. Something like that, maybe you would need three shots, but most often you can get away with only two. So I changed this to two. So another thing that I always do is I go into the third tab and let's go back to third tab and I like to customize my buttons. Now, honestly, it's Canon's come set up where all the button locations pretty much make sense, but there are a few things that I like to do. So I'll go into customize buttons. And one of the things that I always do is I disable the shutter from auto focusing. So it's a back button focusing setup. So we're going to go into our shutter button and we're going to make it to where it only meters and it does not attempt to auto focus. So that would be just metering start. So the other button that I like to customize is I like to go down to our our AEL button or our auto exposure lock button. It's the little star here kind of next to the AF on button. And what I like to change this to is the one shot servo toggle setting. So when I change it to that, when I hit that button, it'll toggle between either one shot focusing or AF servo focusing or servo focusing, continuous focusing so many different terms but i really like to be able to just quickly go up there like i see a bird and i want to be able to continuously focus on it i hit that and i toggle over to continuous focus and then and then i can get my shot so i really really like that now the other one that i like to make sure that we customize is our little joystick now one of the things that is kind of interesting to me is that by default it comes kind of turned off so you're not it doesn't actually move your focus point so i like to go in here and essentially just turn it on. And that allows us to move our focus point using the little joystick. That's my preferred method of using my foot, moving my focus point. I'm gonna also go over to the video mode, which is just to the right here, and we're going to turn that on as well. That way we can move our focus point around with our joystick. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go back into the menu. We're gonna go to the right here. All of this looks pretty good, although we want to make sure that audio compression is disabled. And that's just because I do a little bit of video and the last thing I want it to do is to try to do any kind of um, compression to it. And now we're going to go into the My Menu setup. And you can see here, I've already gone in previously and, and set this up for the things that I like to put in here. So focus bracketing, 
we're going to put in here because focus practicing is useful sometimes. Most of the time, I prefer to just boop the back LCD screen. Now that we have the uh, touch shutter turned on, when I, when I want to take a photo and focus at a particular point, I can just touch it. And so that's really useful for a focus stack. I can just touch it multiple places. It's going to focus in those places. We're all good. But if we're in a macro situation where it's much touchier and you can't really do that kind of thing, this is when focus bracketing is really, really useful. So we want to make sure that we have it in here. Shutter mode, because I'm often toggling between mechanical or electronic, I like to have that here as well. Format card, that's one of the things that you are constantly, constantly accessing to you know, format your card. You should always format your card in your camera, never on a computer or anything. So you need to access that as well. Let's go ahead and go and select another item to register. And another thing that I like to have access to is our intervalometer stuff. So we're gonna go down and here we have intervalometer timer. We're gonna go ahead and register that. And we're also going to register the bulb timer. So one of the cool things that I actually discovered while making this video is that if we go into bulb mode and then go into the menu and here where we added our bulb timer, when we go to enable that, we can hit info now. It says info detail set. And now we can dial in an exposure longer than 30 seconds. So let's say we wanted to do a really long, you know, ISO 800 image to get clean shadows in the foreground of an astro image. Well, we could do that by, you know, setting, setting up a three minute long, a four minute long, however long exposure we want to add. Don't really advocate going too much longer than three minutes because you start getting hot pixels. But it's really nice to be able to dial in an exposure that's far longer than 30 seconds, which is the typical maximum, and to be able to do it without the use of a remote. Pretty cool. We can just use two-second timer and, tr and fire off a three-minute long exposure. It's really cool, and it's not a function that I knew Canon had. That's how I set up my camera. A couple little things. You'll notice I've got an L bracket on here. Uh, this L bracket is just made by Sunway Photo. I have a, a little bit fancier one coming from Really Right Stuff that I'll be putting on this. Um, also, you'll notice that I've got this, this hot shoe cover on top of the camera. This hot shoe it, cover is actually made by Nikon. It's just really nice for keeping some of that nasty sea salt off of the exposed hot shoe. It was really important with my Sony because of all the contacts and stuff in there. And it's, it's always a good thing to keep that area nice and clean so you don't get any corrosion in an area that's hard to clean. So hopefully this has been interesting to some of you guys. This is how I set up my stuff. Let me know if there's anything that I missed that you guys do when you're setting up your R5 or R6 down in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Take it easy, everybody.